Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team's currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 146. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now without further ado, let's get started. First up, we have a new digger, JP Ronnie, who's dug up WinGames backslash arcade backslash brick. If this isn't a breakout clone, I am going to be very surprised. Um, file id.diz. Bricks, a nicely done little breakout type game. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's all we've got to go on. And here we go. I don't see a maximize button. And it's a single border window, so this is the size we're working with. Um, oh, okay. Um, don't hear any sound effects. Not sure if the um, different colors of bricks are going to do anything, but we'll see. Uh, some bad physics there. Okay, so the red bricks turn yellow. Purple one, I have no idea what that did. Okay, so, today we learned the ball physics in this are not good. Whoa, what the f- what the f <laughs> what happened there? The ball just, like, teleported and destroyed a whole bunch of bricks at once. At least the mouse controls are fine. Like, the mouse doesn't leave the main window or anything. I can whip it around as much as I want. And then if I click, it pauses it. Okay, so I see what's going on. So if you're clicked out of the window, then the game is paused. If you click in the window, it captures the mouse and the game continues. And that's good. And apparently, because I'm hitting the middle line there, I can just um, keep the paddle here for a bit. <laughs> okay, let's see if it can actually handle going above the bricks. Oh, that actually sped it up. Okay, so it's taking the original breakout approach there. Because that actually happened in the original breakout, is if you hit the top of the screen, it would speed the um, speed the ball up. But yeah, I wouldn't exactly call these physics good. I understand where they're, what they're going with. Basically, the ball has a particular angle. And when depending on what part of the paddle you hit, depends on how that angle changes, as opposed to what angle the ball goes back up at. Like, that's the... Um, oh, let's see if this works. Yeah, that worked. So yeah, you can't actually send the ball back exactly the way you want to. Like the way Arkanoid physics work, it's that when you the ball hits the paddle in Arc, jeez, the ball does some weird things sometimes. When the ball hits the paddle in Arkanoid, the trajectory of the ball does not matter, except when the ball hits the exact center of the paddle. Arkanoid will not allow the ball to go straight up. So if you hit the very center of the paddle in Arkanoid, the ball will just keep will just bounce off at the in a direction that makes sense. However, if you hit any of the edge of, did it just go straight through the paddle? Hmm, I'm calling shenanigans. But yeah, if the ball hits um any particular edge of the paddle, then it affects trajectory to make the ball bounce back up at that specific angle. Whereas here, what's happening is that the edges simply adjust the trajectory without making too big of a difference. Huh. I just lost the ball, but it, despite having no balls left, it's still going? You know, I got a funny feeling this is not finished. And of course, now we have the classic conundrum of <laughs> not being able to hit the final. Yeah, even though I'm out of balls, it's still giving me them. So, huh. Yeah, so see how it stopped going to the side there, and now I'm sort of adjusting its trajectory as I hit the edge of the paddle. And now if I hit the middle of the paddle... Uh, 
yeah, now I'm definitely convinced this game is not finished. <laughs> because <laughs> there's literally nothing left on the board, and the game is still going, and the extra lives didn't seem to matter. So, there's no right-click either. There's nothing in the menu here. And there's a train coming now, so yeah, we'll just say that this is unfinished. No idea if it's freeware or shareware. Next up, Anthony has dug up WinGames backslash unclassified backslash WinEyes. Not really sure what to expect with this one. Um, like maybe some kind of fortune telling thing? Or maybe just a simple widget that tracks the cursor with a pair of eyes? Funny thing though, we actually have some um, source code here. This looks like it was developed in Microsoft Visual C. Maybe. Because we have the um, .c and .h files, as well as .def, but also .rc, which defines resources. So, well, there's no text files, nothing else, so... Um, yep, that is literally all it is, is an icon that tracks cursor with a pair of eyes. And apparently made by Sarmad Adnan. Probably mispronouncing that. And apparently it's a version 3.01. I'm skeptical as to how many versions this had to go through to in order to um function. Also it functions at a really terrible frame rate for some reason. But yeah, it's literally just a pair of eyes tracking the cursor. Let's give Anthony another dig. So our next dig from Anthony is win games backslash unclassified backslash air war. Okay, with a name like air war, you would think that it would be something spectacular or arcadey, but it's in the unclassified folder and that has me a little worried. And all we have is an executable, so let's run it. Words fail me. <laughs> um, okay, apparently this is called Desert Storm, the Air Campaign. Mother of all battles, help screens. I find it interesting that there's like no title bar. Yet we have that right there and the file menu right there. I've never seen a Windows application do that. Your mission, you are the commander of Allied Forces in Operation Desert Storm. The date is January 16th, 1991, and the President of the United States has just given the order to liberate Kuwait. Okay. Your mission is to conduct the air war to inflict enough damage on the Iraqis so that the ground assault is just a mop-up operation. <laughs> oh, jeez. You'll be graded on the amount of damage you can inflict while keeping your own damage to a minimum. You must conduct the war in such a way that the opinion polls at home don't pressure the president into compromising with Saddam Hussein in order to stay in office. Watch the opinion polls closely. What kind of game have we gotten ourselves into? <laughs> okay, I'm going to I'm going to tell you when I tell you all when I click the button and just watch it how long this takes. Click. That is so slow. Wonder why it's wonder why it's going that slow. I have the DOS box running this as fast as it possibly can. Yeah, there is a lot going on with this game. Oh, hello. Hello. Take a look at this. This file menu here has Mac symbols and the Mac font on it. So this is actually a ported game. Very interesting. Okay, and it just launched, dropped me into the game now. Um, about the authors? Okay, so this is apparently done by an Interaction Software, based out of Minnesota, I believe. Interaction is an interactive multimedia software developer. Commercial custom software is available for communications, computer-based training, and information kiosks. Look for additional entertainment titles like Desert Storm The Ground Campaign. It's very weird that you would be advertising 
freelance custom software, but use this as like your demonstration as to what you're capable of. Well, I guess, I guess that's one way of doing it. I don't know. Now, apparently, there's a lot of people involved with this. Uh, Petter Jacobson, Evan Jacobson, Paul to Tobin, and Scott Ender Scott Endman. Not Enderman. Or no, I think that's Erdman. And there's a legend for the map there. I find it interesting that there wasn't actually any information as to whether this was um, shareware or freeware. Well, that was weird. Huh. It's actually altering the 256 color palette to some degree. Okay, so let's see if we can actually play this thing. This is going to be tricky. Okay, so plan attack. Check, click a mission or target to select it. Um, okay, so what we're choosing here is what we want to attack on the enemy side and what we want to attack it with. So Apaches for the front lines sounds like a good idea. Um, let's also go for... It's interesting that it actually dummies out the ones that you can't use for a particular thing. So, let's get some stealth going for the electronic warfare. Um, I think taking out their communications might be a good idea. Send some F-15s that way. And then let's take out their biological assets with some, some ballistic missiles. Okay, so the attack is planned. Um... According to military weather specialists, the weather will remain clear for the attack. Okay. Um, are we ready? Launch attack? Okay, we're getting some sound effects and some animations. I'm not sure where these sound effects are coming from. Oh, that sound effect is skipping real bad. <laughs> uh oh. Um, you've been called into the Oval Office by President Bush. He sits motionless for a full ten seconds while you stand at attention. Slowly, he leans forward and says, Soldier, you attempted to use a nuclear-tipped ballistic missile in combat. You are hereby relieved of your command and will stand trial for a court-martial. Dismissed. As you leave, you hear him whisper, Crazy idiot, he would have started World War III. Okay. Um. Huh. Well, first of all, I didn't know they were nuclear-tipped, although second, second of all, I probably should have. <laughs> well, that battle went well. End of career, end the game. Yep. Choose quit or new game from the file menu. Yeah, so that was, um... <laughs> uh, that was a game. <laughs> Again, no idea if this was freeware or shareware or what. It was clearly originally developed for the Mac, but... Yeah, um, I'm not sure what to say about this one. And our last dig for today comes from James Dunn. Win games backslash arcade backslash windpool. Gotta be some kind of billiards game. Windpool. Um, well, there's a lot of bitmaps for the balls. I'm um, gonna read me. Um, we also got source code again. What is it with finding source code for everything today? Uh, what's the file ID that does say? Windpool, a Windows game that was created from the code that was written for Xpool, which is an X Windows version of this game, which simulates a billiard game by using an approach called discrete element methods. Hmm. Well, what's the right file say? 
This line is interesting here because I can't tell what exactly it is. It almost looks like this part here is a copyright and this part here is the location that it was made in. I'm just guessing, just based on the 1992 here, but I'm not entirely certain. Yeah, that was the guy's name, is Mail Art. Um, also note, when you run the program, you're going to see a layout on the main window, Saloon H. Hider? Hitter? In case if you wonder what the hell that thing is, it is the place where we that we used to play pool when I was in high school. Okay. So, yeah, I got the feeling that this was actually intended to be, like, freeware. Or possibly even open source, just judging by the, um all the instructions here about how to compile the source code and everything. Hmm. Well, let's see what we got. Windpool. Does it maximize? Uh, kind of? <laughs> kind of. Huh. We probably don't want to maximize it anyways, just because of the fact that we've got this little, um... This little toolbox here. Okay, so, um, players. Player one will be me. Player two, 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 tool, player tool. <laughs> I guess we'll call him tool then. <laughs> I didn't mean to say that. I meant to say player two, but okay, he's tool now. Um, yeah, I guess new game. Okay, so we can actually show the trajectory. Oh. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. What is going on? Okay. Um. Yay! Okay, seriously, that should have done more than that. There it goes. Okay, so these physics are, um, bad, <laughs> to put it mildly. I was thinking, there we go, we got some bouncing around, and it's not working very well. <laughs> yeah, these physics are, um, not good. <laughs> and, like, there's no, um, there's no, like, indications as to whose turn it is. The ball physics are really broken. <laughs> Admittedly, this is free software, so if somebody wanted to, they could open the source code and open up the source code and fix all the problems the way they want to. Like the the thing is, the traje trajectories of the balls make sense. What doesn't make sense is the acceleration of the balls, because they literally come to like a dead stop way too quickly. And for some reason, when the ball is like. Yeah, when the ball's over here, you end up clicking and dragging it. Or then maybe down here? What is with... what is going on? How do I get the ball out of here? I want to get the ball out of here. Okay. That's just a... I don't know what's going on. <laughs> like, sometimes it... sometimes it... <sighs> okay, then. Um... So this was Windpool. It's, um... broken. <laughs> That's the best way I could describe this. It is very broken. <laughs> Oh boy, there's no, there's some kind of thing that determines like whether you aim or not, and yet when that happens, you're allowed to drag it outside of the main area. This is so weird. But yeah, clearly this is another piece of unfinished software. But again, source code is there, so if anybody wanted to actually finish it themselves or make it better or whatever. They could. 
But yeah, I can't see anybody playing this specifically for enjoyment. Well, <laughs> aside from the crazy ball catastrophe that happened just a moment ago.